Welcome to another Indie Dev Showcase, highlighting the many indie games we play here on the channel. If you'd like to submit a game for a future video, please reach out. But otherwise, let's begin. We are starting things off with Kilka. The footage you're seeing is taken from the 1.0 release. The game was on Early Access and did come out in 2022. This is an auto-battler style roguelike, where you run a kind of mercenary guild out of a tavern. And in order to save the day, you and your team are going to have to go out and try to stop whatever big bad wants to destroy us all. And to save it, we are going to go on missions, level up, and of course, acquire lots and lots of loot. So, the main element of this game is definitely the auto-battler design. After certain battles and the start of the game, you'll choose from different heroes. Each hero belongs to a different kind of element or alignment. They'll come with different affinities or abilities as well that you can choose from that will affect kind of their overall role, such as being more of a buffer healer, Maybe this is more of a debuff support, that kind of thing. And it will be up to you to figure out which party members you want to take, what ability kind of paths you want them to go down, and of course, what gear you want to give them. You'll acquire gear for completing certain missions, and you can buy some as well. And this is kind of like your main form of improving them over the course of a run. They will of course level up and gain more passive and unique abilities, but again, with this being an auto battler, it is all about how you set up your party dynamics to win. Some characters will work better in different rows or different positioning, and you'll need to make use of this if you want to have any chance of surviving. So the general like meat of this game I think is pretty well done. But it still falls into much of the same problem that a lot of these auto battlers have. Is that you're going to win until you don't. And there is very little in terms of information or proper feedback to the player as to what could they have done differently. Should they have moved one character in a different spot? Should they have taken someone else? And again, because all your choices are going to be limited to each run, it means that a potentially bad choice you made, let's say for your first character, may not come back to haunt you until it's far too late to make any adjustments to it. So this is one of those games that you'll know very quickly if you are the right audience for it. If you're looking for a game that has a lot of input from you in terms of success or failure, this is definitely not going to be it for you. But if you are looking for another auto battler slash idol style game, I would at least give this one a check and see if it works for you. And now we turn to something that is definitely not as hands off, and that is Rail Route, the story of Yozik. This is a kind of free expansion and more story driven companion to the game Rail Route. And this is a management sim about running and keeping trains going. It is your job to make sure the trains arrive on time, and that is a lot harder than it sounds. You'll need to figure out what routes to send trains on, when to send them, as well as changing how the different switches will operate in terms of which rails will go where. And the game itself, again, it has a very basic aesthetic to it, but it's very clean and it kind of occupies that kind of same look and feel to something like the uh, Mini Metro series and stuff like that. This is one of those games that it is definitely going to be on the drier side. You are not going to be playing this or doing any kind of dodge rolling or dodge training <laughs> along the way. And it is clearly meant for fans of the management sim style. It can be a little awkward to learn, at least from what I played of it, because you have to constantly be managing where the lines are going to go. And it starts off easy when you're just dealing with one train. But once you have multiple trains going, going to different places on different lines, then it gets a little bit tricky. So again, much like the first game of this video, 
this is one that you'll know very quickly if you are the right audience for it. I'm not a huge management sim guy myself, but if you do enjoy this kind of design, I would at least give this one a check because the expansion here is completely free to play. And if you want more to it and kind of even more stuff along with the management sim, then you can pick up the main game, which is just Rail Route. Now for something far less brain melty to learn, and that is Maggie the Magnet. This is from the same developer that we've played several one of their games for these showcases. And again, they kind of specialize in a lot of micro style titles. With Maggie over here, this is a puzzle style game, as you can probably guess by now, built on the elements of magnetism. You'll hit a button to send Maggie close to the nearest magnet, and you'll have to use the kind of simulated physics or even more like realistic side of how things are going to move around to collect all the MacGuffins and get them to the end of the stage. As you can probably guess from this footage, this is by no means going to be a very difficult game to play if you just want to get through each one of the stages. As you can tell by the footage, this is by no means going to be a difficult game to learn or play. If you won't go for all the MacGuffins and all the challenges, it will prove to be a little bit challenging. But again, this is one of those games that you'll know very quickly whether or not you're going to enjoy it. And if you are someone looking for a kind of like a casual puzzle-ish kind of game, I would at least give this one a check. We now have Panic Mode. The footage that you're seeing is taken from Early Access and may not represent the current version of it. This is a puzzle game by way of kind of like the sims or like theme park theme hospital that kind of i guess aesthetic we live in a crisis free world where unfortunately crises still happen and it's up to us to try and get as many people alive and away from danger and no matter what the situation may be the kind of main element here is that you're going to set up various alarms and devices designed to detect as well as alert people about any kind of danger. Once they have been alerted, they will try and make for the nearest exit. All the while, well, disaster is going to be happening and you are graded on how many people you get to safety. As the game goes on, you'll be introduced to more dangers, more sensors and notifications, and other ways of trying to get people alive. The concept here is really well done, and the puzzle logic itself, or the logic within the world, does make some sense here. As smoke and other alarms can be directed or moved around to let people know about, and I'm really curious to see how far things will go. If I had any issues with this one, is that at least from the levels that we played on stream, it does seem as if there is going to be like a quote unquote best way to get things done because you are limited in terms of the tools and such for each level. This is not going to be like a Zachtronics level of histograms of everyone having their own ways to get through it. But I like the aesthetics and it's definitely a very different take on puzzle design. And if you're looking for, I guess, safety drill puzzle game, then definitely check this one out. We now turn to Star Valor. This is in the kind of 4X open universe style with that of an ARPG. And we've seen a lot of indie developers who've gone this route over the past decade. And Star Valor is definitely set up to be more, I guess, pick up and play compared to some of the other ones that we've seen. As the story goes, you have the entire universe open to you, a lone ship, and you're going to go out there and do whatever the heck you may want, interact with whoever you want, and try to build a life out in the universe. The RPG nature comes in with being able to level up your kind of character, get different perks related to different aspects of living in space. You can also optimize 
how the energy in your ship will work on the left hand side, affecting of course weapons, speed, and your shielding. And this is one of those games that again the footage you're seeing is definitely very early game. And this is one of those games that if you enjoy this style of design, you are going to have a lot of time and a lot of gameplay open to you. As I've said plenty of times before, the kind of go anywhere, do whatever you want style game doesn't quite interest me just simply because I don't have the time to dedicate to a game of this extent. But if you enjoy the kind of space open simulator style and looking for something that at least from what I played is a lot easier to kind of get your space feet wet then definitely check this one out. For the last game of our showcase we have Lost Twins 2. The footage that you're seeing is taken from its demo and this is a puzzle game in a similar aesthetic of that of like a Studio Ghibli style affair. As the title implies we have a pair of twins who are lost. In order to get them back home, we are going to have to puzzle solve our way through a variety of worlds, mazes, and of course, lots and lots of puzzles. Our key element here is that each puzzle stage itself is made up of a series of rooms that you are free to move the panels around, provided they connect in some logical way. This will allow you to transport one or both twins into different areas, affect where they come out of each room, and try to get them both to the exit in order to move on to the next. The story page describes this one as definitely being more for like everyone involved. From our time spent in the demo, the puzzles seem to be on the moderate side. I don't know how brain melty they are going to get in the finished version. But the aesthetic is certainly on point here. And with this one being a demo, it means that we really don't have a whole lot to go on from what we played. But if you're looking for another kind of puzzle platformer, and one that can be played by everyone, then this is certainly one to keep an eye out for when it is released. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where you some of the art and science of games.